Did you know that without one incredible woman, Darwin could not have created his theory of evolution? Or that this same lady came up with an ingenious way to use hardened dinosaurs' poop, allowing scientists to learn more and more about our Jurassic ancestors? If you had lived during the Victorian era, you might have had the chance to meet the Princess of Paleontology. One of the few female fossil hunters who received recognition, credited with the discovery of one of the first dinosaurs, and even believed to have contributed to Charles Darwin's groundbreaking theory of evolution, as he drew on of Mary's fossilicid creatures as irrefutable evidence that life in the past was nothing like life in the present. Mary Anning was born in 1799 in the southwestern English county of Dorset. As she grew up, King George III ascended to the English throne. Tensions between the British and Napoleon flared. Jane Austen penned her iconic work, Sense and Sensibility. And there she was, a young girl amidst these historic events. The Anning family was deeply religious and extremely poor so impoverished that out of 10 children, only Mary and her elder brother Joseph survived into adulthood. But things could have been totally different as her nurse was struck by lightning while holding baby Mary. But the newborn girl survived and, like a DC protagonist, became one of the brightest minds and heroes of her time. Mary's father was an amateur fossil enthusiast so by the age of five, she had become his fossil hunting companion. He not only taught his beloved daughter how to search for fossils, but also how to meticulously clean the specimens they found on the beach. When her father tragically passed away, Mary's mother encouraged her to help settle the family's debts by selling her precious discoveries. When she was only 12 years old, Joseph found a strange-looking fossilized skull. Mary painstakingly revealed the long skeleton's contours, and by the time she finished, her town knew she had uncovered a monstrous creature. The mysterious specimen sparked years of debate among professionals. Eventually, it was christened Ichthyosaurus, or the fish lizard, classified as a creature that roamed the Earth 200 million years ago. This discovery was sold and eventually turned up in a museum, but Mary Anning's name remained unknown. At the tender age of 24, Mary became the first to unearth the complete skeleton of a plesiosaurus. The specimen was so peculiar that rumors soon swirled, suggesting it was fake. Nevertheless, a meeting was arranged at the Geological Society to unravel the mystery. Though Mary was not invited, despite her talent for discovering and identifying fossils, the scientific community did not admit her contributions. Male scientists, who frequently purchased the fossils Mary uncovered, cleaned, prepared, and identified, often omitted her discoveries from their scientific papers. Several of her findings were described in prestigious journals without even a mention of her name. Even when she became the first person able to determine the diet of dinosaurs, as well as how and why they passed away, using their fossilized poop. Instead, all the credit went to her erstwhile male friend. At 29 years old, Mary uncovered a strange jumble of bones, this time with a long tail and wings. What she had found were the first remains attributed to a pterodactyl, the largest flying animals in history. Despite the fact that Mary continued to sell her numerous discoveries and made two other groundbreaking finds, she struggled to make ends meet throughout her life. Her life was cut short by breast cancer at the age of 47, and she remained in financial distress despite a lifetime of extraordinary scientific achievements. After her passing, the town seemed to mourn not only for Anning herself, but for the significant loss to the community as her presence drew a multitude of distinguished visitors. The world has treated me so unkindly, she once wrote to a friend. I fear it has made me suspicious of all of humanity. Nevertheless, despite her challenging life, Mary left behind something even more precious. The countless children hunting for fossils along the Jurassic coast near Lyme, where she once made her most astounding discoveries. Today, there are more women paleontologists than ever before. 
Some have gained international acclaim, as Esther Applin, Julia Anna Gardner, Mildred Adams Fenton, Winifred McLamory, Elian Bass, or Hu Yutong. All of this thanks to the brilliance of one extraordinary mind.